Hello Drum School and Drummer Friends, it's Alan here, hope everybody's keeping well. Today we're going to be looking at what's affectionately called the train beat, so to get us in the mood we're going to head over to the gig for some Johnny Cash. Let's go. <laughs> Well, I hope that got you in the mood of maybe thinking about putting your dancing shoes on. Uh, Fulsom Prison Blues by the legendary Johnny Cash. Uh, that was just taken uh, uh, from a recent gig. I actually don't get uh, an awful lot of opportunity to play uh, country when I do. I love to play, uh, when appropriate, that, that rhythm, the train beat. So why is it called the train beat? It's because it sounds, or it should sound, like the sound of the old-fashioned train. All right, and whenever we're playing that, we're thinking about 16th notes or semi quavers. One, yanda two, yanda three, yanda four, yanda one, yanda two, yanda three, yanda four, yanda one. We're also thinking about the two types of notes that we're playing because we're playing non accented and accented. Hopefully you can hear the difference coming through there and also from the clip uh, from the gig. Uh, when I'm thinking about the non-accented notes, I know some people might say, well, they're ghosted. Hmm, possibly. Certainly they're a lot quieter. I don't know whether I would say they're ghosted. Could potentially be. I haven't actually ever seen um, uh, a sort of a chart for a country beat that's got all the non-accented notes ghosted and then the accented note popping out. But certainly they're quieter. The way I like to think about it is I'm trying to create a rhythmic texture because we want them low. You don't want them too high. I have heard occasional horror stories of rock drummers trying to do uh, country gigs and playing the semi curves Taka, 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 taka. Oh, it's too much, too much, all right? So you got to keep them nice and quiet. And to do that, obviously, we're going to go close to the drum head. So I'm just a little bit up off the drum head. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one. All right, so about there, okay? Now, obviously, if you're on a gig and uh, if you're mic'd up, that's that's okay. If you need to play those a little bit louder, just make sure that you uh, give yourself enough headroom then to hit those accents that are, that are going to come along, all right? So we're going to... Uh, sometimes I like to think about it almost like I'm tickling the snare drum. Don't literally mean that because I'm playing with sticks. But in my head, I'm thinking, got to keep those nice and low. They just want to cut through and no more. And that's the way that my uh, uh, mind works whenever I'm, I'm playing this. And then hitting those accents. Uh, and I think that's not, not a bad way to think about it. This is one of these rhythms that might appear to be easy enough to work on, but harder to execute. And actually, you know, whenever you watch some of the the, the true uh, uh, country drummers, they're just absolutely fabulous. And they can do all sorts of things with a, a similar beat and just make it just sound just like silk, you know, just fabulous with real drive and, uh, and groove in there on those country tunes. So, um, so we're keeping the 
non-accented notes nice and low. And then we want the accented notes to pop out. So we'll do it slowly. One E and a two E and a three E and a four and a one E and a two. All right, and then we're going to add in the bass drum and the hi hat. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three. The hi hats on the off beat. All right, so there's a regular one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. And you uh, notice there at the end, uh, I put in a couple of other accents there. So you will do that. And I think once you uh, get used to playing the regular beat, if there's other little accents that you can throw in, they add to the texture. Because obviously the music changes, uh, certainly in the likes of Folsom Prison Blues there, uh, when it goes into the guitar solo, you might want to add just the occasional one, maybe at the end of a phrase, uh, uh, just to add to it. All right? So that's essentially... Your train beat, so keep your non-accented notes nice and low. You're thinking semi-quavers, one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the... And I'm thinking about, I'm just creating a nice little texture, rhythmic texture. Add in the bass drum on the beat. Hi-hat, stepped hi-hat, off the beat, then accent. And you heard the other accent coming in there on the left. All right, again, adds, hopefully, to the overall groove. All right, drummers, hope you enjoyed that uh, short lesson on the train beat. As I say, it's one of those rhythms that might appear to be easy uh, to, to do, but maybe a little bit more tricky to actually execute. So spend a wee bit of time. Certainly working on those non-accented notes will certainly help you whenever you're thinking about uh, working on ghosted notes or, or really uh, getting a, a nice feel uh, on the snare drum for quieter uh, hits. And, uh, uh, and that's, a, that's a good place uh, to work on those as well. So Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd be really grateful for a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd be grateful if you do that as well. Uh, it's growing all the time. There's lots of lessons on there, lots of blues, blues, shuffles, and uh, there's some rock stuff as well as uh, uh, just some uh, regular good old-fashioned drumming uh, material on there. And uh, I hope you can uh, uh, enjoy that and uh, find that on the channel. So thanks again. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye. Hi drummers, it's Alan here. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Plus, hit the links to become a Belfast Drum Channel member and get access to extra full rated lessons up to the professional level. Thanks so much again and bye for now.